What links ice production in pre-electricity Iran with the whitest paint ever made by man and the deep cold of space? It's an advancement that utilises simple physics principles to help save the Earth and produces refreshing ice drinks. What's up, you scholars of enlightenment? Last week, scientists at Purdue University announced that they've developed a new paint that is so supremely white that it could only be finally realised by grinding in Prince Philip's skin to the formula. Too soon. The new paint reflects 98.1% of sunlight energy and can keep surfaces and buildings up to 19 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than their ambient surroundings. Now, this could help us to reduce cooling energy bills, improve comfort in hot cities and hot climates, and even combat global warming by reducing our reliance on air conditioners. It turns out that this paint is not only the whitest, but the coolest. A realisation that may shock many. Yo, check this out. Black guys drive a car like this. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, but white guys, see, they drive a car like this. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We're so lame. Now, I've seen that a lot of channels have covered this development, but not many have explained the science behind it, which is more intricate than you might expect, but also nothing new. Settlements around the world have painted buildings white to enhance cooling for centuries, and the Iranians and Indians were able to create ice houses to form ice in the scorching but clear sky desert long before the invention of electricity or refrigeration. So what's the physics at play here? Well, to understand what's going on, we have to understand a process known as radiative cooling. Here comes the science bit. Concentrate. Imagine a flat painted roof exposed to the atmosphere and sky. Energy flows into the roof from several sources. The sun shining down upon it. The atmosphere, which itself glows at certain frequencies of light, especially in the infrared. And from the warm building below that may contain warm machinery, computers or people. All this energy flowing in tends to heat up the roof, giving its particles more energy and making them vibrate around more vigorously. However, simultaneously energy is being removed from the roof, potentially by direct contact with the surrounding air, so conduction and convection, but also and crucially by a process called radiation. The energetic vibrations of the particles in the roof are converted into light particles or photons and energy is radiated out into the atmosphere. This process removes energy from the particles in the roof, makes them vibrate less vigorously and tends to cool the roof down. Now these energy flow processes are in a constant tug of war. If more energy flows into the roof than flows out, the roof will heat up. If more energy flows out of the roof than flows in, the roof will cool down. And it turns out that with special material design, or paint design in this case, we can tip that tug of war in our favour and cool down a roof and its associated building significantly below the temperature of its surroundings. <laughs> The first thing we can do is to drastically reduce the energy flowing into the roof from the sun by making it from or painting it with materials that reflect a huge fraction of the sun's incident energy back into space. Now, the sun emits most of its light in the visible infrared and ultraviolet regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. This means that any paint designed to keep a building cool must reflect much of this light back into space. The paint designed by the Purdue researchers is specially formulated with an ultra-high 
60% concentration of a white compound called barium sulfate, BASO4, in a typical acrylic paint base. With such high concentrations of barium sulfate particles, the Purdue paint is able to reflect 98.1% of the sun's energy away from the surface and back into space, keeping it from being absorbed by the roof. And the key to such high reflectance lies in the electronic structure of the barium sulfate. The compound has a very large electron band gap of about six electron volts. That means that very little light from the sun has an energy this large, and hence the barium sulfate absorbs very little of the incoming solar light. The barium sulfate particles are also several different sizes, each size being better at reflecting different wavelengths of the solar light back into space. What's more, under a scanning electron microscope, we can also see that the paint contains air voids between barium sulfate particles. These air voids enhance the solar reflectivity of the paint even above that expected by theoretical simulations. And it's this fact that the paint is so incredibly and amazingly reflective and that it reflects almost all of the light in the visible part of the spectrum that makes it look so dazzlingly white to us. Are oh, you so white, you the light that people see before they die. You so white, Wayne Brady's jealous. You so white, you thought Malcolm X was a porno. You so... It's essentially the polar opposite of Venta Black, which appears so black to us because it reflects none of the light that shines upon it back to our eyes. The Purdue paint is so white, in fact, that it's being held accountable by LeBron James. I find that offensive. So the fact that the paint reflects almost all of the light from the sun helps it and the building that it's painted on to stay cool. It's the same reason that some settlers wear white in the desert. But there's also another clever trick that we can play with this new paint. Because not only can we reduce the energy flowing into the material, but we can also ensure that it's easier for energy to flow out of the material too. Now, as luck would have it, it turns out that the atmosphere of the Earth is extremely transparent to infrared radiation in the eight to 13 micrometer wavelength range. Molecules like nitrogen, oxygen, water, and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere do not absorb much light at these wavelengths. What that means is that it's easy for infrared radiation at these wavelengths to pass through the atmosphere unimpeded. It's the reason why telescopic infrared surveys are viable, if not optimal, on the Earth's surface, because the infrared radiation can pass through space, then through the Earth's atmosphere to ground-based telescopes. So, if we can tailor our paint to emit most of its radiation in this transparent sky window, the energy it emits will readily pass through the atmosphere and right out into the cold reservoir of space. The object it's painted on will cool down, and crucially, the heat that is radiated will not simply be expelled to the local surrounding environment, but expelled far away from the object and far off into deep space helping to keep the very Earth itself cool. Change is coming whether you like it or not. It turns out that the Purdue barium sulfate paint has been specially designed to have an internal vibrational or phonon resonance at nine micrometers. That means that much of the radiation it emits, about 95%, falls perfectly into the Earth's transparent sky window. And therefore, is transmitted directly into outer space. So, in summary, by making our paint incredibly reflective over the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, containing most of the sun's energy, and highly transmissive in the infrared part of the spectrum, the paint can be cooled down significantly and can take the thermal vibrational energy from any object onto which it's painted 
and emit it far off into deep space, cooling down not only the object, but also the Earth. It's a good deal. And the performance of this Purdue paint is really quite amazing. During field tests, the Purdue researchers found that the barium sulfate paint stays more than 4.5 degrees Celsius below the ambient temperature of its surroundings. This throughout an entire 24 hour period and even during the full daytime direct exposure to the sun. Oh, 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 that's cold. Yeah, so is your mama's bed. These results suggest that such paint coated on a warm building would be able to extract heat from that building and emit it into deep space, even under bright sunlight conditions. The researchers claim that the paint displays an average cooling power of around 120 watts per meter squared. That means that for every meter squared of roof that this paint is applied to, 120 watts of cooling power, the equivalent of two light bulbs running continuously, could be saved. To put this in context, if the paint were painted on a typical 1,000 square meter building roof, the cooling power saved would be equivalent to turning off 2,000 60 watt light bulbs, or the typical central air conditioners of more than 100 homes. And all this without putting any energy in, and by just applying a thin coat of paint. And that's the great step forward that the Purgy researchers have made. They've shown that full daytime subambient cooling of a paint and therefore potentially a roof and connected building can be achieved with just a simple coat of paint and without putting any energy in ourselves. You see, previous full daytime radiative cooling solutions included complicated, expensive, many layered structures that limited their applicability in real world environments and structures. In addition, currently commercially available heat reflective paints have, until now, been limited to a solar reflectivity of around 80 or 90%, limiting their ability to cool structures and buildings and meaning that they fail to provide all daytime cooling. The Purdue paint solution, in contrast, provides great reliability, a convenient paint form, ease of use, and it's crucially compatible with current paint fabrication processes. The paint has also been shown to be robust to abrasion and in various weathering tests. The researchers are so confident in their paint's performance that they've even filed a patent and expect the paint to be on the market in as little as one to two years. But all this really begs a question. If this technology is so simple and the fundamental physics principles of it have been exploited for centuries, then why aren't all the roofs of the world painted white? Good question. Especially when the Berkeley lab claims that worldwide use of reflective roofing could produce a global cooling effect equivalent to taking 300 million cars off the road for 20 years. Shut up and take my money. Well, various pilot projects around the world have met with some success. In Ahmedabad in Western India in 2017, 3,000 city rooftops were painted with white lime and a special reflective coating to reduce internal temperatures. And in the city of New York, the city has coated more than 10 million square feet of rooftops white. So get out your paintbrush and make Greta proud, right? Right? Wrong. Well, this may not actually be the magic bullet that it seems because competing drawbacks have to be taken into account. For example, for cities with colder winters, reflective roofs that cool down a building all year round might increase demand for heating in winter, offsetting any cost and carbon savings made by cooling savings in the summer. In addition, condensation on cold roofs can be a significant mold risk. Highly reflective paints can also make it impossible to use rooftops as storage spaces or as a place for daily chores without being dazzled. In addition, untouched white roofs 
could also limit the rollout of green roofs on which plants grow, which could provide higher sustainability benefits where they are practical. On a more specific note, experts in the field of material science have also sounded notes of caution regarding the Purdue paint itself. Careful now. Down with this sort of thing. It turns out that a relatively thick layer of Purdue paint is required to obtain significant cooling, and the paint contains a very high concentration of barium sulfate pigment. Since pigment is the main cost of paint, it remains to be seen whether the Purdue paint is financially viable, especially in poorer, hot countries. Experts also point out that wide application of the paint would require the mining of vast quantities of barium sulfate with associated carbon emissions. A comparison of the carbon dioxide emitted by the mining of barium sulfate with the emissions saved from lowering air conditioning use would be needed to fully assess the potential carbon impact of the new paint. Realizations that don't necessarily paint the prettiest picture. So, the science of radiative cooling and its application to real world problems is nothing new. However, none of these methods have previously been practical for widespread urban cooling. Until now. The scientists at Purdue have produced a simple, practical, easy to use solution that could provide unmatched cost and carbon savings. It's an important leap forward and a very exciting tool in our arsenal in the battle against climate change. To put that potential into context, the lead scientist on this project, Professor Ruan, said, We did a very rough calculation, and we estimate we would only need to paint 1% of the Earth's surface with this paint, perhaps an area where no people live that is covered in rocks, and that could help fight the climate change trend. Very exciting stuff. So, will paint help save the world? It certainly looks like it has a bright future. Get it? Oh, never mind. Oh, never mind.